I have probably watched the Deku vs Muscular and United States of Smash Crunchyroll collection clips a million times each. Those 2 minute and 30 second clips are like digital roids injected straight into my cerebral cortex. For a while now, people have been trying to crown My Hero Academia as the new king of shonen. Whether it's games, figurines, movies or boys love, there has been a concerted effort to make My Hero Academia fill the void left by the end of shonen titans like Naruto and Bleach. Based on the quality of those short clips, you would think that Hiroaka would be the rightful inheritor of the shonen mantle. As we are now embarking on its fifth season, I gotta say, My Hero Academia just ain't it, Chief. My Hero Academia is extremely overrated. Before we get going, spoiler alert for My Hero Academia and Naruto plus Naruto Shippuden. To break down this lofty claim, I first have to contextualize the current state of affairs in shonen anime history. The world is changing, constantly technologically evolving. The ways in which we consume entertainment has also changed dramatically. It's no coincidence that in the past year alone, every big media company has set up their own streaming service and is now trying to pump out their own originals a la Netflix. Anime 2 has changed. Back in the day, the anime scene was just a few shonen juggernauts dominating the viewership pie. These shonen shows would run concurrently for an extremely long time, some even lasting for decades. Thanks to technological restrictions, these shows were designed to not only fit weekly television schedules, but to also accommodate the fact that they would be running consecutively for years on end. This meant recaps, fillers, and slow, consistent pacing. As viewers, we expected this though. Shonen anime wasn't something you just watched. You lived with this shit. Naruto, DBZ, Bleach, even the still ongoing One Piece all fit this archetype. Thanks to streaming, technological advancements, as well as just a general evolution in the industry, the anime scene is now built around a revolving door of seasonal, binge-friendly shows. The classic shonen experience is dying. I think the end of Naruto Shippuden in 2017, once a bastion of the quintessential shonen anime lifestyle, marked the symbolic end of an era. My Hero Academia was hyped as the next big weekly shonen jump property to usher in the next generation of filthy weebs. Significantly, My Hero Academia was going to embrace the modern seasonal lifestyle. Unfortunately, Hiroaka's seasonal format contributes to one of its biggest problems, pacing. Shonen action stories are notoriously slow paced. By design, shonen battle series aim for longevity and Hiroaka is no different. With its anime though, when you slap on subtitles like season 1 and season 2 and program the show to release in bursts of 12 or 24 episodes, people expect shit to go down. Even if it's not conscious, with the seasonal format, we expect not only the entire season to have a feeling of narrative completeness, we expect each episode provide a fulfilling and distinct roller coaster of emotions and story beats. Back in the days, an anime could get away with slapping on a cliffhanger and making a relatively emotionally empty episode because it was within expectations. Let's look at My Hero Academia Season 4 real quick to illustrate these pacing problems. The first half of the season was spent on the Eri arc. The villain of this arc, Overhaul and his Yakuza organization are introduced kinda abruptly and then are defeated within like 10 or 15 episodes. After Eri's rescue, we spend the latter half of the season watching the UA gang piss about over a school festival live concert. Somehow, the first half and Overhaul feel incredibly rushed while the school festival live feels bloated and dragged out. It does not feel like a season, more like an arbitrary collection of episodes slapped together. This seasonal format does allow the animation team to pour time and money into those short clips of viewing ecstasy, but the format overall just does not click with My Hero Academia's narrative experience. When I wait over a year for anime story content, I don't want to be watching No Damn School Festival live! Beyond the fact that My Hero Academia has traditional shonen pacing in a non-traditional format, Hero Aka is just unbelievably slow paced and plodding. Every time it feels like the story has a chance to push on and get real with its stakes, Horikoshi pulls back. I know I'm not the only one, but yeah, All Might really should have died after his fight with All For One. Now he just hangs around UA like your everyday crusty village geezer. 
In general, Hiroaka never really engages the full spectrum of emotions. If you were to mark a graph of the emotions the show conjures, it would be a relatively flat line. Let me emphasize My Hero Academia's emotional limitations with a comparison. Let's look at when the third Hokage fought off Orochimaru's mini invasion of Konoha in a little show called Naruto. The narrative role of this fight and All Might's fight with All for One are nearly identical. Both fights represent the iconic and important defeat of the mentor shonen story trope. The young protagonist and his squad have not developed enough to properly fight the main antagonist, so the mentor figure rises to the challenge. Both mentor figures defeat or at least ward off the main villain, but lose the ability to defend the protagonist in the future. Narratively, this is when not only do we realize how far the protagonist has to grow, but it's also the point in the story when the crutch of the elderly defender, the mentor who makes you feel safe and assures you that everything will be okay, is lost. Yes, All Might loses his powers. Not only does the third Hokage die, he fucking seals his own soul away to the devil. The Hokage doesn't even properly defeat Orochimaru. All he does is turn his arms into putty. Even more significantly, after his death, the show devotes time to actually showing the Hokage's funeral and the way that his loss shrouds the village in a mist of misery. The OST made specifically for this event, a song literally called the Hokage's funeral, is the quintessential melancholic anime soundtrack. Coincidence? I think not. Pacing isn't just about keeping things fast paced, it's about understanding when to ebb and when to flow. You make those highs feel more intense and visceral when you allow the viewer time to digest. Not only does Hero Aka not do this, having All Might's crunchy post-hero form with them stupid ass baby shark teeth constantly milling about just kills the impact of his sacrifice. Yes, the United States of Smash 2 minutes and 30 seconds in a void is more entertaining than any 2 minute 30 second slice from the Hokage vs Orochimaru fight, but All Might's battle is just overall less meaningful. In general, there is a feeling that My Hero Academia is just always so low stakes, so pedestrian. Deku's tragic backstory is light bullying at best. Bullying sucks, but come on now. Naruto's out there with no parents, getting spat on daily by every single Konoha resident. The Elric brothers watch their mother die and then try and revive her, only to be cursed to oblivion. And then we have Deku, chilling at home with a loving mother, all sad about how he doesn't have superpowers. Nah, G. Let's rename this show First World Problems Academia. I'ma say this, Yuki Hayashi, the show's composer, deserves a fat raise. Every great anime needs a great soundtrack, sure, but no other show is so carried by its OST. Those short clips? Yeah, so much of the emotional legwork is done by the soundtrack. The fact that everything goes with You Say Run is kinda telling. Another big flaw with the show is its setting. At the beginning, I was feeling the superhero vibes. I thought it was interesting to see very American capitalistic themes of heroism through the lens of Japanese anime. Yeah, the anime will every now and then chuck some shtick in about what it means to be a hero and all that, but there comes a point when you realize that it just isn't a superhero anime. My Hero Academia is a goddamn high school anime. Every arc is a play on a classic slice of life high school anime event. The sports festival, the camping trip, having an internship, the school festival, bruh. The first time is cute, but there comes a point when you become the very thing you sought to destroy. Related to the pacing problems, every time I feel like the show is ready to let go of the reins and have a good old battle shown an arc, there's always some stupid high school crap just chucked in. Yo, let's go! Deku's about to finally fight the Yakuza and the League of Villains. Give me some of that Tatakai, Horikoshi. Oh, but wait, we need to have the school festival. Bruh. My Hero Academia is very generic. It's a high school anime, the most generic type of anime out there. Deku is so generic that my man could have his very own harem anime. Even the genre that it basically abandoned, the superhero genre, is quite literally the most generic genre in the world right now. There are usually two ways that people criticize My Hero Academia. 
One is that the anime viewing populace say it's a good show ruined by an incredibly shitty fan base. I don't use Twitter, so I don't interact with this digital degeneracy. Or two, people point out its mediocrity, but frame its flaws as just part and parcel of the shonen genre. Whenever someone criticizes Hiroaka in this second way, they always bring down the big boy shonens with it. It feels like subconsciously, in a misguided attempt to justify Hiroaka as the current king of shonen, Anitubers, reviewers, whoever, when recognizing Hiroaka's problems, feel the need to then diminish the classics that it is supposedly succeeding. I already brought up the third Hokage vs All Might moment as a point of comparison where Naruto lightning blades my hero's pathetic cop-out body, but to double down, I'm gonna bring up Night Eye's death, and I don't even need to call it with Jiraiya's noble sacrifice, I only need Asuma's death to prove Naruto's supremacy. Once again, both Night Eyes and Asuma's deaths have similar narrative significance. They both represent the side mentor's death. The critical comparison is also similar. In Naruto, we spend time with Asuma. We even get the Pagante girlfriend tragic subplot. In the show, we not only have a greater build up to his death, we are also, again, given time to grieve and even build up our vengeance against Hidan, his killer. Of course, Naruto has to be the one to defeat Kakuzu, Hidan's partner, but the story allows Shikamaru, Asuma's direct apprentice, to avenge his mentor. Not only was the fight itself tactical and uniquely Shikamaru, those feelings of grief and rage made Hidan's descent into an eternal tomb all the more satisfying. The visual motif of Shikamaru using Asuma's lighter to finish the fight provides a stronger feeling of completeness and emotional fulfillment than any stupid subtitle like Fourth Season. In My Hero Academia, we are given like 30 minutes of screen time with Night Eye, and even after his death, as much as I love Lemillion and think he would be a better protagonist than Deku, Mirio is so giddy and optimistic after his mentor's death, it's just like, okay mate, whatever then. Night Eye's death felt like Horikoshi realized the Eri arc needed some consequences, so we just killed some random geezer to up the kill count. Night Eye deadass gets a 5 second slideshow funeral. Big yikes. You want me to double down? Let me frickin' double down. Deku breaking his body to save Todoroki during their tournament fight, only to lose by default, is thematically inferior and less emotionally impactful than when Naruto showed Neji that he could overcome destiny in societal cages by actually beating him against all the odds. I'm not trying to froth and throb over Naruto, but my point is, My Hero Academia isn't bad because it's just another mainstream shonen. It's bad because it is bad! To make things even clearer, if Naruto or any other classic shonen was released today in a seasonal format, I am confident that Hiroaka would be so clearly inferior. I've got more beef with Hiroaka. I'm gonna say it. Deku's hero costume looks bloody stupid, mate. Man's rocking up to fight crime looking like a furry. My man is the Zootopia Avenger, and Bakugo is such an annoying prick of a character. Being a grumpy knob who swears a lot does not constitute charisma, okay Twitter stands? There are a million people like Bakugo in every neighborhood, and I guarantee you that you don't like them. And Shigaraki is just a shit tier John Cena fanboy. I don't want the video to drag on any longer. There are more pros and cons to the show, but I'ma call it that. To sum up, I think that My Hero Academia is popular and well liked because it released during a limbo in the anime scene. There has been a universal desire to crown the next big shonen king, and I think that not only the fact that My Hero Academia was the first hyped shonen property to adopt the seasonal format, as well as the fact that it is very generic and plays it safe, made it perfect for this role. I feel like this desire to always be living in the best time has caused people to deride other big shonens for My Hero's flaws because it sucks to actually realize that the OG shonen experience is dying. In contrast to My Average Academia, Demon Slayer feels like a genuine evolution of the shonen genre, and I think the way that it blew up in a way that Hiroaka just never really has reflects the fact that Demon Slayer is a genuinely great new thing. Even more recently, Jujutsu Kaisen has blown me away. JJK's fight scenes made me feel that heart and mouth tension that I crave, and just wow, the show is so good. 
even though Hiroaka is still young, I do feel like the shonen scene has already kind of evolved beyond it. Hiroaka's time as the stopgap shonen king is already semi over. I know it's a hot take, but as an anime offering that classic shonen feel, I think Black Clover is actually better than Hiroaka. Once you get past the beginning and all the I promise it offers some good old shonen fun. More so than Hero Aka, I feel like Black Clover knows what it is, and once you get past the screechy voice acting, Chad Peasant Asta is way more likable and optimistic than whiny virgin first world Deku. Also, Yami is cooler than All Might. Oh! 